This is the Extra Point Podcast from Arizona's family. All right, so there are times in life where you have these conversations, you meet people, and then you kind of go your separate ways. You keep up with them a little bit, and then uh, and then your paths cross again, and, and it's uh, it, it's cool when there's something cool that happens um, where, where you can really – uh, connect with people. So our next guest, Shannon Easton, she has a new book out called Lady Ref, Making Calls in a Man's World. And uh, her story is just a- excellent. And we had a conversation about it right here in Arizona's family probably six years ago. And now Shannon's book has come out. She zooms into the Extra Point podcast. And I mean, how cool is this? The book is done. We did the interview and we talked about the book and I'm looking at the book right here and it, I have a signed copy Thank you, thank you, thank you for your kind words here. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, can I share real quick how you inspired me? Yes, you yes. I didn't want to. I don't want to take credit for your book or your story, but this blows me away. Yeah. So when Mark interviewed me, I don't know six years ago, after the camera stopped rolling, he asked me a few questions, and as I was talking to him, you know, off the record, he said, "You need to write a book." And I had been thinking about it for some time. Several people have. I'd heard that over and over again. And that was the day that it finally hit me when Mark said that to me, that you need to, you need to write this down, that I finally decided to do it. So, Mark, I appreciate you. And thank you for just uh, getting me going on this thing and inspiring me to do it. Well, that means a lot. The signed copy of the book means a lot. And, uh, I, again, I don't want to take credit for your story at all, but that's – that's super cool, but I remember having that conversation, being like, "This is a book. This is a this is a documentary. This is this is a, an incredible story here." So, uh, before we get into the story, just the, the the process of getting the book together. I mean, getting all of your thoughts on paper. How did how did that all go? Yeah, it's you know, it's a really challenging, difficult process. For some crazy reason, I had saved every piece of communication that I had, every email, whether it was positive communication with somebody or negative that had to do with officiating kept it all in a binder. And I don't even know why I kept it, but for some reason I did. So as I started to piece this thing together, I was able to look back at those emails and pull dates and put some great content into the book and very difficult process. Um, anybody that wants to write a book, God bless you. It's not easy. <laughs> uh, went through a ghostwriter, a co-write writer, wrote it a couple times before I even got to that point and then rewrites after rewrites, but I'm blessed. It's, it's done. And it's, I believe it's a really great story. Not because please understand that because it's my story, but it's just a good story. And my co-writer, amazing Kate. Uh, she just, she did a fantastic job of bringing the story to life. So I really appreciate, appreciate her as well. Well, let, let's get into the story if we could. So you're, you're, you kind of grew up liking football, watching football. What made you, want to become a referee until 1996 i never even thought about it and uh, i was working some camps christian athlete ministry camps and in between coaching these kids we had to grab a whistle and officiate some games and the first time i blew the whistle i it was like light bulb literally light bulb moment i'm like this is this would be great i'd love to officiate basketball and then looked kind of checked into it talked to some people and while waiting for basketball season I had some couple months and I asked, would it be crazy to try football um, just based on my love for the game and had some great people encourage me and football became my passion. And so you worked your way up. So what was the first game that you officiated and what did the path look like to get to the National Football League? Uh, First game, well, first game was Pop Warner. Um, First high school game was Maryville Trevor Brown and uh, the path, long, long path. Junior college, a little bit of Division II, a few years in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and then 2012, finally got the opportunity to uh, work in the NFL. So tell us about the process of getting the call to go to the NFL and walking on the field for the first time. Um, how, how, how are you able to kind of, as you've had time to write it all down and process the experience, do you ever sometimes look back and say, I was an official in an NFL game? Does that, does that still kind of blow you away at all? It does, but it felt realistic from, for me from the start that that was something I could achieve. I am the most realistic person when it comes to my abilities and what I can do and can't do. I always say this, could I play in the NFL? Absolutely not. 
Did I think from the start I could officiate in the NFL? 100%. So it's more crazy because when people talk about, you know, the, the magnitude of what I did, it, it doesn't seem like it's me. I'm just, I'm just so down to earth with stuff that when people, you know, and I'm in a room with great people, I'm blown away and they're like, well, you're a great person. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just not, I don't think of myself that way. So it's different for sure. But, um, just ugh, what a opportunity I had great opportunity. And so being what you were the, the, the first, right. So just the, the first female to put on the, the, the female or the, 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 I guess the, the referee outfit, the referee uniform, that's the word I'm looking for. The first female to put on the referee uniform in the national football league. What was it like walking out on the field? It was the most amazing moment. Um, everything leading up to it. I think I mentioned this earlier today when I was talking to your wonderful colleagues, but, uh, everything leading up to it was just, there was so much going on. But when I stepped on that field, it was like, I was home. I could finally take a breath and enjoy the moment up until that point. There was so much going on. And, you know, I just was, I just wanted to be perfect. And, uh, you know, as an official, you can't be, you can strive for it, but you're never going to be, but I just wanted to make sure I did everything I could to be prepared. So when I finally stepped on the field. I was home and it was, it was a wonderful feeling. And, and so how many games did you end up working? Um, three, uh, I should know this, right? <laughs> uh, it was two in preseason an alternate for another game in preseason, uh, three games in regular season. And right before the fourth game, which would have been at home in Arizona is when we were told we are done. So, and that was part of the replacement ref, uh, situation, right? So was that, so you were you were told you were done. Um, you, you got you got the call. You got to work the games, and, um, and and so you're done. So what what did you do after that? Well, the NFL had identified a couple of us that they really wanted to bring back. I was one of those people. I was, uh, you know, I was told several times, Shannon, we can't get you back on the field fast enough. There's some things we got to do. We got to get you through interview process, things like that. Um, so in the meantime, having lost my college job, the NFL made a way back for me to get back into the MIAC and, um, because I wanted to make sure I was working while they were working out this process to potentially hire me back. So went back to the MIAC, have to read the book. It wasn't, <laughs> didn't work out so well for me, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, I, I laugh, but you got to laugh at yourself sometimes, but, um, Preach. anyways, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so you went back to the MIAC, and and we'll 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 uh, we, we'll kind of tease the book so people can pick up the book and and read the story. But you have since uh, you're back out here in Arizona, and is there any desire to return to the sidelines? Could we see you back um, officiating at some point? Probably not. Uh, it, I mean, if I, I mean, if the NFL came knocking, absolutely, I I would, I would take that opportunity, but. Most likely it's not going to happen for me at this point. So it's fine. Everything happens for a reason. Life is good. Do you, do you, is there any animosity left over from the NFL or as you look at your situation and how you were part of the replacement refs and, uh, and they, you know, were seen a certain way. And so you've seen other females been able to elevate and get on the field and, and have the, 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 the careers going forward. Do you feel like being part of the replacement refs was something that maybe, uh, you know, cost you down the line? Certainly had I waited, I would, it would be hard for me to believe that at this point I wouldn't be a full-time official because I was right there. And even my supervisor in college said, what are you doing? You're going to get there without this. But for me, you know, I've been hearing for so long, I can work, I can work. I should be given an opportunity. And I wasn't, and I was at that, that stage where I was like, I'm just going to go for it and make it impossible for them not to hire me back. You know, because if a woman gets in and proves they belong, that's what they're looking for. So I did that, and some pieces of the puzzle kind of didn't go my way after that point, and that's why we're at where we're at now. So, but no, no animosity. Um, I wish all those women that are there now success, luck. You know, that's that's wonderful. I, I 
pray everything goes great for every one of them. Did any reach out to you just as, as they were making their debut here to, were you able to give any advice to, I mean, not, not maybe even female refs, but just other, other officials who have, uh, who have made it to the NFL of, of what to expect and how to, how to have poise. And not necessarily the women, but I have had communication with other NFL officials. I've worked with some amazing officials in junior college, and there's some some great guys that I had an opportunity to wit, work with. And Brad Rogers is one of them. Brad's an Arizona guy, and he was in the right place at the right time. And just, you know, just he did the right things. And I, uh, Brad is just a wonderful man, deserves everything that's coming his way, everything. That, so guys like that had definitely had some um some things that I, I believe that I helped him with and he helped me in return as well. And, and you were, you know, even though, you know, I, I know the, the, the story talks, uh, chronicles your journey of getting to the NFL and, and what happened after that, but you have been able to give back and you've still been able to work in, in officiating. So what has it meant for you to, to, to go on that path? And, and, and if you could just tell people how you have spent your time, uh, since, since you did work in the NFL. Yeah, so I'm the director of officials for the Canyon Athletic Association, uh, as well as I was running my own business, SE Sports Officiating. I recently turned that over to somebody else, but I am still assigning thousands of games a year through the Canyon Athletic Association. So every sport, not just football, not just basketball, but all sports. And part of my job is to make sure we're mentoring these officials and training them. So it is... Uh, probably more difficult than what I did on the field. So I, I, I would imagine you're pretty good with spreadsheets, right? Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny that uh, I can manage 400 people's schedules, but a good percentage of those 400 people can't manage their one schedule. So yeah. So it's uh, something I'm definitely, I excel at. So that's great. And, and, you know, we're, we're seeing out here in Arizona a lot of Thursday night football games uh, for high school football, and we've heard that's because there is an official shortage. How, how big of a problem is it right now that there aren't enough officials to, to work games? Yeah, it's definitely a problem. Officials are just not being treated, just not being treated right. And the older generation that is near retirement, it has pushed them over the edge. They're like, why do I need to put up with this? And no amount of money is worth this. I, I say even myself, you can pay me $100 to go work a football game because what they what they have to deal with in a lot of cases, it's not every case. There's a lot of great teams out there. Don't misunderstand me. But you see it, you see the abuse of officials, and it's it's making things really challenging for sure. So we've had to try to do some things and develop some programs to try to bring in even high school kids, but just think about the abuse adults take. So we really need to make sure that we protect those high school kids so that it's a positive, positive experience for them. So they want to continue. And, you know, I would just, you know, would really love it if everybody could take a deep breath and realize that they're doing the best they can. Everybody, just like your kids are at different stages of the game and learning officials are some of them. It's their first game. So little compassion would go a long way. Right, for sure. And and for anybody who's who's out there that wants to get involved in officiating, how would you how, where would you steer them? Absolutely. Um, reach out to me personally if you'd like. You can go to the uh, azcaa.com web, website and gain my information there. You can go to my personal website shannoneaston.com. Definitely if you have if you want to, another movement is a lot of dads and sons are working together, and that's a great way to spend time with your 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 kiddos. So, anybody that's interested in fishing, you're never too young. Come on over, and uh, we'll do the best to get you trained up and ready to go. All right, and let's uh, let's talk about the book again, real quick. So, where can we find the book, and uh, how can people get uh, get get a, a copy of it and kind of follow you out there? Um, on the internet and, and see where you're talking and, and, and what uh, what's next for you. Yes, yeah, so the book is available everywhere. The easiest place is Amazon, and uh, the publisher is Roman Littlefield, so they would appreciate it, obviously, if you would go to their site and buy the book as well. I am doing a couple signings locally. Uh, this Saturday I will be at the Barnes & Noble in Scottsdale at 2 o'clock, and then the following Saturday I will be at uh, the Barnes & Noble in Mesa at 2 o'clock. And then later on, I've got some in Tucson and then um, some other things going on. There's a lot of great things going on, but just reach out to me. And if there's, if you want to know where I'm at, I'm, and if there's anything I can do to help you, 
in any regards, please reach out. All right. That's, uh, that's, man, that's, that's pretty cool. Especially somebody who wants to get involved in officiating can go right to somebody who's worked in the NFL. Um, as your story is told here and people read it and people hear about it, what message do you hope that they take away from it? There's, it's, it, this book, it's, it's more than, it's really definitely more than football. It's about life and it's about the things that are more important in life achieving your goals is great, but unfortunately for me, I, I did make some mistakes. You'll read about them. And, uh, God was faithful to me, um, through those mistakes. And, um, there's just, there's a lot of lessons in this book, but just don't be afraid to dream big. Don't be afraid to dream big. There's nothing women, anyone just work hard. And like I always say, I I don't, you know, I just got to trust God that, he's going to surround you with the right people and, and lift you up when you need a little help. And, um, yeah, there's, I hope you, I, like I said, it's, it's a good story, not because it's my story. It's, it's a really good story. Well, and I, and I can't help but think with what you're saying and, and, and reading, I'm going to go ahead and read the, uh, the inscription here, if that's okay. It says Absolutely. you inspired me to get this book done. Thank you. And that gives me the chills as uh, I think about the, you know, the chance meeting of uh, just doing the doing the story together. And, and now we have the book sitting here and uh, all the people that you can bless in the process. So thank you so much for your time. And, um, yeah, we should probably keep in touch to see what's going to happen next. Absolutely, Mark. If you need anything, please reach out. Don't awesome. hesitate. Awesome. You have uh, you have changed my life. So thank you. Wow. Wow. That's incredible to hear. And I, I really appreciate that.